Good morning, traders. I'm Dennis Dick. And I'm Joel Alcon, and welcome to Pre-Market Info. Well, we had lots of shop there yesterday, Joel, but we still are finding resistance in this whole 1640 area. Yeah, it, uh, got a nice pop up off the open yesterday, cleared the 1635 level, uh, got to 1641, and then little uh, article in the Financial Times uh, took us down hard, uh, didn't make a new low of the day, and came back to settle just about in the middle. Hey, bring up the chart show yesterday's trading action. Yeah, it was uh, Robin Harding there from the Financial Times tweeted out his article, and he just said the Fed uh, was probably, he was thinking that the Fed was going to taper in September, and everybody reads that as like, oh, does this guy know something, and the market gets nervous. It's crazy, like, just off a tweet like that, that the market can have that vicious sell-off that it did, and then obviously bounces back when they realize that, you know, that was more his opinion as opposed to, you know, any factual information there, but it shows how jittery this market is, though, and how dependent it is on the Fed, you know, continuing to obviously stay easing as opposed to uh, pulling back their QE. You think uh, maybe get an inside day here at, you know, ahead of the Fed meeting tomorrow, I, just people looking to square up positions? Or? I think it could happen. I think we're going to see a little less volatility today than we did yesterday, and I think you're exactly right. We often do see the kind of the calm before the storm ahead of the Fed here. I'd say, you know, look at the 1640 area. We've had multiple highs there in the past. We have ticked up in the pre-market to 1639.50. So again, that's reiterating that resistance level. So resistance is resistance until it's broken, and uh, that continues to remain resistance. You are bringing up a chart of gold here, and gold trading down again. Does gold ever go up here, Joel? Like It seems like every day, if the market goes down, well, gold just kind of sits there. And if the market's going up, gold's going down. It's just, I don't know, man. This gold has just not been a good investment here over the course of the last two or three months. And it's just hung out here almost too long now, between the 1360 and $1,400 uh, level. And it makes me think that it's starting to get heavy. Ah, well, the gold bugs can be a little bit excited here that uh, we did crack the support at the 1372 level. Uh, went down to 1371.70, but we're still holding it. So basically, uh, we're staying in a trading range uh, for the last uh, four or five days here. Haven't quite got to the uh, the recent low at 1364.50, but uh, if you're holding in here at the 1372 level, uh, it's trying to trying to muster a little bit of a rally. Next level after that would be 1364.50, and that was a low on June 11th. Yeah, I just look at that chart, though. Like, when you look at that chart, doesn't it look heavy to you? <laughs> doesn't it look like it's sitting there consolidating here for the last month and almost thinking, like, it might actually start breaking down again? What do you What do you think? You think you, it... You, you, I'm bearish everything. <laughs> I'm bearish, every, right? bearish metals, too. <laughs> <laughs> but you'll bearish everything, so... Uh, I go on to the crude. Might as well take a quick look at that because actually that has been popping up. Uh, got some mechanical keyboard or something in the background. I don't know what's making noise, but um, crude ha is popping up here. The last three or four trading sessions, uh, this whole ninety-eight dollar level, pretty key. Right, uh, we hit uh, 98.03 here in the session today. Uh, yesterday's high, quite a bit up there, ninety-eight seventy-four. Uh, that's your major resistance here. Uh, keep an eye on uh, yesterday's uh, low. Uh, we hit 97.41 in today's session. 97.38 was the low from yesterday. Uh, still in, still pointing north until we take that out. Uh, we slip below 97.40. Really, no major support until you get uh, well into the 96 handle, perhaps 96.42. Uh, which was your low on Friday. Let's move into the equities here. We do have some market movers. Hormel Foods, wow, that actually got just got annihilated briefly there. Um, they're cutting their 2013 guidance. They cut it at 8 a.m. Eastern right on the button. Dollar eighty-eight to a dollar ninety-six. Uh, they're seeing now versus estimates were up at a dollar ninety-nine. But the news algo got a little bit excited here. Joel kind of overshot thirty-nine thirty-six. Um, well, I was trading at 40.65. They ticked this thing down all the way to 35.18, just 100 shares, but that's an overshoot if I've ever seen it. It is bid up now at 38.35, which seems a little bit more reasonable. 
Yeah, I guess people uh, stop eating spam or something. I don't know <laughs> that for it to go down to thirty-five eighteen. Uh, yeah, that's You did ridiculous. get that print there. You're bouncing right up here now, just hugging the thirty-seven dollar level, which is uh, still down. Uh, you know, three dollars and sixty. Well, it's bid cents. up though now. Yeah, a ten one tick, but it's bid up at thirty-eight thirty-five. So that's getting really? reasonable. So I think, in, oh, and nobody's hitting that. That thirty-eight thirty-five guy's sitting there. Nobody's hitting them. So it makes me think this thing's only going to open down a buck and a half or two bucks. I don't think you even come close to seeing anything under 37 bucks. Okay. Well, uh, uh, looking at the uh, the daily chart, did have a nice three-day run. Uh, if it does, uh, if it does start to go back uh, into uh, rally mode here, uh, you did have uh, three lows, four lows between 39.20 and 39.44. Uh, so all those lows and that will now act um, as uh, resistance uh, if you start to rally. Uh, the low here, the major low that you had was at 38.45. Uh, that was on June 6, and you said that's approximately where it's trading at right now, correct? Yeah, well, it's, it hasn't traded, at... but it's been a thir it's been 38.35 offered. Actually, it just ticked up to 38.70, so it just ticked up here a little bit again here. So it's only down about a buck 95 now. When it's down quite a bit there before. Yeah, uh, 38.45. Then uh, the guy that was buying on uh, June 6 is back out there again at that level. Do apologize for the audio troubles. I'm not sure what's happening in the background, but uh, we're having a little bit of audio difficulties today, so do apologize for that. Move on to AIG here. AIG trading down on Bernstein comments this morning. They're saying their ILFC sale could be terminated. They also see uh, they're also lowering their 2014 earnings per share estimates because of that, uh, just lowering by four percent. But that's enough to knock the stock down here 70 cents this morning. Close to 45.15 is trading at 44.41 right now. Took it down to 43.99 uh, on the initial uh, initial spike down, uh, rallied back to the 44.80 level uh, since then. So there's a couple points to look at. Uh, looking at the daily, and we were discussing this before we went on the air. Uh, really, just very well uh, defined support. In AIG uh, 43 and a quarter. You had a low, a couple more at 43.23. So. You know, you still got to hang in there. That's still major support. You have four or five lows in that area, so you know that's another buck away from here. But uh, I don't see AIG being in a whole lot of trouble until you take out that support level, and then uh, we're obviously not going to see the uh, major resistance that we have up here at the 46.50 level uh, today, unless it can rally a couple bucks. But uh, what a defined uh, yeah. trading range uh, for this stock. You know, for a pretty volatile stock too since the beginning of May. So. See if it's going to be a resolution to it to the downside or the upside. But those traders that have been trading these stocks and channels here for the last uh, month and a half have done very well just looking at these old highs and old lows, and they seem to hold. Even look at J.P. Morgan from yesterday oh. there, Joel. We've talked about that 54. We talked about it yesterday, the 54.20, 54.25 area being resistance. Again, that's resistance again, and, and uh, 54.25 being the high there, or 54.25 uh, 54 being the high yesterday. I did put a trade on, I shorted a 54.17 a little early, I covered there uh, just before the close, 53.90 and change, so I had a little trade off of that resistance level. You had to take a whole nine cents worth of heat on that? Yeah, seven cents, yeah, I don't like taking any heat, but it's a decimal world, you gotta take a little bit of heat, so... Uh, but again, you know, here we are. We're up to two and a half bucks. It'll be interesting. We just took 54.08 in the pre-market. It'll be interesting to see if that area can be resistance for the fifth time in a row. Yeah, it's getting a little bit of a running start, you know. Yeah, since it is. Closed at 53.85, and uh, you know, trading up a little bit in the pre-market. Another one of the, you know, another thing to be aware of too is, you know, once you, you know, if you play in the breakout on these kind of things and they go up you know, 15, 20 cents real quick, shortcoming or whatever. Then they come back down to that level. That level should act as support. If that level, if after it breaks above it, it comes back down through it, uh, you know, sometimes you get, you know, you get, you get a lot of false moves in this market. But that's a great level if you JP Morgan traders out there uh, to be looking at 54 and a quarter. And then uh, not to be outdone by Bank America. <laughs> Bank America has had five highs in a four cent range. Uh, it's wow. trading right up there right now uh, at 13 and a quarter. So, boy, it sure looks poised to uh, to get going and get a run start and take that out. And then, you know, trade up to, you know, the 1355 level. Uh, 1355 was your high on June 10th. Yeah, and 
obviously just keep in mind that resistance is resistance until it's broken. So, you know, I don't get interested in this until price starts ticking up in the 1330 area. Give it a couple of cents. Um, but off the bat, we're opening right into that resistance, and you're right, we are getting a running start at it. So maybe today it's going to be the day that it takes out that resistance level. Uh, a couple other ones here. Let's move to the upgrades and downgrades because there's quite a few here this morning. Um, you've got uh, the financials actually uh, getting some analyst action. HSBC getting upgraded at Citigroup here this morning, and it is trading up a dollar right now at 54.68. Obviously, the ADR so it trades with an active market uh, this early in the morning. Uh, but what do you think of this chart of HSBC? Interesting call here. Uh, you know, after the after the steady decline, uh, I would just alert our traders. The June twelfth high, fifty four eighty six. Uh, I think we've kind of sneaked up there in the pre market here. Yeah, pre market high fifty four uh, seventy four. So you're getting it up a stick, opening into resistance. A couple other ones here. Uh Barclays is bearish these Canadian banks because they're downgrading the Bank of Nova Scotia, which is BNS. They are also downgrading TD Bank, which is symbol TD. Uh, both stocks haven't traded here today, but they are offered down, or offered flat at least, so I'd expect that they probably do open down somewhere with this Barclays downgrades. Uh, kind of tight ranges here too. Uh, yesterday, uh, 8082 was the high. 80.21 is the low. Just keep an eye on that. Haven't uh, really had much trading in the pre-market. Yeah. I think uh, with this TD, you take out this um, 80.21 level. Uh, you're really not looking at uh, major support until you get into the mid 79. 79.60 was uh, your low on Friday. Here's an interesting chart, Comerica, which is CMA. They're getting downgraded at Wells Fargo. And I guess they were looking at this three or four days of consolidation where it kind of looks like it's just sitting on a cliff ready to fall off. We'll have to see if that does indeed happen today with this downgrade. It hasn't traded here in the pre-market. It's offered at 37.39 after closing at 37.59. So it looks like it will open down. I would keep an eye on that low, 37.18, which was the low from Friday. If it takes that out, a lot of air below. Yeah, yeah, I have to agree on that one. Uh, you did have the 37.18 low uh, on um, Friday, and then go back a little bit farther. You had a 37.26 low on uh, May 8th. So sitting on the cliff formation, I don't know if uh, uh, O'Neill has that in his technical analysis book, but uh, mm -hmm. sitting on major support here, it could easily uh, fall down to the 36.50 level. Cor or, uh just going into CRL, which is Charles River Labs. That's getting downgraded to sell at the big gun <laughs> Goldman Sachs, and that obviously is going to put some significant pressure on this stock today. It's offered at 42.49. Nobody's even hinting at buying him. Closed at 43.21, so it's offered down 70 cents. Nobody's looking at it. 41 is the best bid. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if we actually do test this major support where you have these three lows from 41.70 yep. to 41.85. Uh, basically back uh, at the beginning of last week. Actually, you got five lows uh, in those uh, those uh, in that area uh, from 4170 to 4185. That's still a buck and a half away from there. Uh, you got to imagine though, on the, if it does manage to get down there on the first dip, uh, could be some uh, shorts uh, anxious to see that level get a little bounce there at least the first time. Uh, coming back on the upside. Uh, haven't taken out yesterday's low yet, 42.90. Uh, so you can use that as resistance uh, back up to the close of 43.21. Goldman Sachs with a couple of other downgrades too. They're downgrading the Williams companies, which is WMB, and they are also downgrading WPZ, which is Williams Partners. So I guess they don't like Williams stocks here here today. Both of those stocks are trading down in the pre-market. Uh, recent low of the move uh, for uh, Williams companies, uh, 32.54, um, and then uh, for the other issue on the uh, what, what was the symbol? WPZ, on the other one, bro. Oh yeah, Not Williams really Partners. Enough. Yeah, both bearing down on the low of the move here. Uh, the recent low uh, for the stock's been 47.22. So really, those are the only uh, 
the only reference points that you have in those two issues. couple of earnings tonight that we're going to get is Adobe and Lazy Boy, and I just want to give you a little preview of the technicals here. Let's start with the big gun, Adobe. Hasn't traded here in the pre-market, but it has looked like it's found some nice support in the whole $42 level. It's rounding up and trying to get some interest here ahead of tonight's earnings report. Right. Uh uh, too high. You gave the support, uh, the resistance, uh, forty three seventy six to forty three eighty five. Uh, so keep an eye on that level. If not, you could easily uh, break into the forty four handle. And you got to mention Lazy Boy Chairs, uh, my hometown, uh, Monroe, Michigan. Here, uh, this company has had a nice little run over the last couple days. Uh, so got near the major resistance uh, that you had at uh, nineteen sixty nine. I can only get it uh, up to uh, 1956. Yeah. Yeah. Guys, I got to cut in. Consumer price index just came in. U.S. CPI for the month of May came in at 0.1 percent versus the expected 0.2 percent estimates. The prior was minus 0.4 percent. Core CPI month over month for May came in at 0.2 percent, exactly in line, beating the prior estimate of 0.1 percent. USA building permits for May came in at 974,000, slightly beating estimates of 975 or missing estimates of 900. 75,000 um, and missing the prior revised number of 1.02 million. USA housing starts for May came in at 914,000 versus the 950,000 estimates, beating prior report of 853,000. Thanks there, Jake, uh, for the info. Market shopping around a little bit on that information. Not too crazy. Uh, 1635.50, where we're trading at right now here. Yeah, I guess uh, the S&P traders uh, were uh, getting a cup <clears throat> of coffee or something during that number. The numbers just, I mean, besides the unemployment number, uh, you really, really have been, haven't been getting great moves yep. um, off, yeah, off these levels. Um, I will just notice that uh, something got into gold here uh, from those numbers. Uh, it's got, got a little bit of a rally Starting going to bounce here. A bit. Yeah, yeah, it bounces off that uh, 1370 level. So, whatever they saw in that CPI number, uh, it's just getting the gold bugs a little bit excited here. So. It rallied five bucks. You better sell it, right, Dennis? <laughs> <laughs> Seems like every time gold rallies, it almost is a sell. But uh, eventually, the gold bugs will have their day. I just don't know when that's going to be. Lazy boy, we were talking about before we got those numbers there. Uh, you were citing that resistance area up in the 1965 area. We almost ticked up there yesterday. Uh, have uh, pulled back here, though, uh, towards the close. We pulled back yesterday. Yeah, I, just looking at the support too, uh, two lows between 1881 and 91, those two levels. That boy, I tell you, if it cut through that level today ahead of earnings, I think I might be a little bit cautious uh, uh, owning this issue. Well, you wanted to point out a couple other resistance levels here. Exxon Mobil, this whole $92 level continues to remain major resistance. I feel like we've been talking about Exxon Mobil, the $92 level, for a year. <laughs> Have we not? Like, if you look back on this chart, this number has just been significant. I know it's cut through it a few times there back in May. But this $92 level has just been so significant for this stock. It's like the level that is just uh, it's always discussed here. And it seems like when it pierces back through it, it always becomes resistance here again. There's actually some institution that must agree with me because I see somebody selling 50,000 shares at 92 as well in the New York book. Yeah, uh, 70, 91, 71, high on Thursday, got up to 77 on Friday, or excuse me, yesterday. Uh, just, you know, not really popping here uh, with the spoos up three points. You think it would be, you know, hugging that level, uh, but keep an eye on there as well as a nice round number of 92. The stock has not been over 92 since uh, the end of May, the last day in May. So you definitely you got some nice resistance forming here in ExxonMobil. And then you got this Apple level, this whole 430 level. We keep bouncing off of it. Uh, does not want to pierce it. And actually, yesterday, the same story got down to 40, 30, 36. And then went up to 435, 70. But Apple has really gotten tight now. It's uh, obviously only had a five point range yesterday. The range just keeps continuing to get tighter and tighter and tighter. Like I was saying, I think if eventually we do start taking out this whole 430, you know, I know the low 428.50, but you got to give it a little bit once a $400 stock. This whole 430 area still is support. I got to think eventually, maybe though, it's going to take it out. But well, when is the last time Apple traded in a five point range? It's just getting I mean, tight. It's winding up to do believe, something. Yeah, you had look. I mean, five point range. The day before, it had like an eight point range. 
uh, inst the uh, the company must be back there with just like an insatiable like 430 bid buying back. They must be using like 14 billion dollars to buy the <laughs> stock here at 430 or something. But man, it's just winding up here. Maybe uh, maybe a 420, 440 strangle or something here. Even though you get killed buying premium in this market. Uh, boy, at 430 is just presenting you with uh, you know a low risk buy here. At least you can identify the low of the move at 428.75. But yeah. boy, five point range for Apple. Holy smokes, what happened to this stock? Yeah, it just keeps uh, getting tighter and tighter here. I want they want something you know they want to hear about a new product. They want you know something here, and I think it continues to just show little interest until we do start to hear some fundamentals from Apple here. Uh, but keep in mind, 428.50 is that low, and if that gets taken out, I would not want to be long this stock. So you do have I mean, a low risk buy. IPhone. You bought an iPhone a couple months ago. I mean, that's not <laughs> it's not the helping iPhone. the iPhone. Well, let's talk about that iWatch. You know, they keep talking mm -hmm. about that thing. But I don't think that thing's going to reinvent the wheel here. You know, wristwatch, it's just a, uh, I don't know. Who I'm, wears watches? Well, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, it's kind of just a weird product. So I don't think that one's going to be the big gun thing. Uh, but that's okay, let's the... just touch on the solars real quick before we uh, before we go to the question and answer period because that, these are very interesting charts here. First solar uh, since that that secondary offering of forty six, people have used it to whoop up on the stock, but now it's just holding forty five like a champ here. Uh, forty four thirty four has been the low of the move, but uh, forty four eighty it hit yesterday and uh, you know was able to rally off it so. Nice support for me here under the, uh, the the price. You got any opinion? I know you're not in love with solar stocks. Eh, I have no opinion on the solar stocks here right now, um, really. But I would just say, from a technical perspective, for, for on the first solar, 44.34 is the bogey. That was the low on Friday. If you're going to play from the long side, that's the low where you need to cut out probably. If it breaks below there, I would not want to be long in the stock. And that's what it's all about. It's all about keeping it simple. And that's what we try to do here on the show. Because really these levels is really how the stocks trade. And when they start breaking down and making new lows, that's when you know you can make some money actually too, you know, from playing it from the short side. Um, obviously when support is support, you, you know, you can play from the long side as well. But keeping it simple there, I'm looking at that 4434 number. If that holds, you can stay a little bit bullish here. If that gets broken, eh, I don't like the stock. Yeah, you also uh, got a, a low going back at 44.76 on May 9th, so that whole $45 level has been support for a while. SCTY, not as well defined uh, of a chart here. You do have the three lows. Uh, you know, the low of the move, 33.11, but uh, 33.73, 33.80 stepped up to be a double bottom here. Um, you've had four higher lows in the stock uh, and f uh, three higher high so that's that's a good sign for it and then the other one spwr it's funny how all these ch these charts just look the same uh major support coming in at the 1870 level well we're running short on time here so that's our show for today uh, we'll be back with you guys tomorrow